This video will cover the three types of bone formation present in the human being. All the photomicrographs are hematoxin and eosin and were prepared at the Iron Forces Institute of Pathology in Washington, D.C. I am indebted to Drs. Lent Johnson and Don Sweet, both now passed, whose monographs provided key source information for this video. There are fundamental concepts that are relevant to the discussion of growth and development of the skeleton. The first is to understand bone formation. Bone cannot develop in a vacuum, but rather requires a template on which the bone is deposed. In man, the templates are collagen, leading to a specific type of bone that has a woven or membranous characteristic, and cartilage, leading to enchondral bone formation. Once bone has been deposed and exists as a structure, then it is remodeled through a third type of bone formation, which is termed lamellar. This type of bone is stronger as it is applied in opposed layers of collagen. These layers are like plywood in that there is a predominant direction of the grain that is at an angle to the adjacent layer. This reinforces the structure remarkably. In lamellar bone formation, the pre-existing bone acts as the template. The rest of this short video will review these three types of bone formation. Subsequent videos will outline the cellular players, the osteoblast responsible for bone formation, and the osteoclast whose task is cellular bone removal. Finally, Wolf's Law will be described. Simply said, bone is made where it is required and deleted where it is not needed. Slide A depicts those bones that arise through woven bone formation de novo in the embryo facial bones, skull, and clavicle. Slide B shows the earliest stage of membranous bone formation. You will note that the field is highly cellular with a background of spindle cells and some pink red material sitting outside of the larger cells. A spindle cell is narrow and elongated and you see them scattered throughout the slide here. 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 And many others. These are the stem cells or the pre-osteoblasts and when they receive the signal to proceed down the pathway to become mature osteoblasts the cells enlarge and change shape as they develop the intracellular machinery for protein production and ultimately excretion. The osteoid is elaborated by the plumper osteoblasts as the pink amorphous material that you see here, here, and really as a background in many places throughout the slide. As the facial bones and the clavicle arise in this manner, it is thus not coincidental that the tumors arise, that arise in relation to the skeleton in this region throughout life show a predilection for fibro-osseous morphology, fibrous dysplasia, ossifying fibroma, and osteoma. The general rule, as first outlined by Dr. Johnson in the 50s, is that osseous tissues forming in any area predict, in part, the morphology of the neoplastic lesions that may arise later in life. Cell biology is what is driving all of this. Trying to understand the cell biology of the musculoskeletal system is like trying to play a sport on a moving playing field. This slide outlines the multiple factors, endocrine, paracrine, and autocrine, involved in the process of differentiation from the stem cell to the osteoblast. The steps are stem cell, mesenchymal stem cell, pre-osteoblast, and finally mature osteoblast. For each step, the factors that have been identified as controlling elements are listed adjacent to the step. The elements that are underlined and are in italics also control the previous step, mesenchymal stem cell to pre-osteoblast. The key proteins regulating gene transcription are all in the white boxes. 
beta-catenin is a protein that directs gene transcription for osteoblast differentiation at the pre-osteoblast stage. RUN-X2 is required for mesenchymal progenitor cell differentiation into pre-osteoblasts and for suppressing their differentiation into adipocytes and chondrocytes. Osterix and beta-catenin act by directing the differentiation of pre-osteoblasts into immature osteoblasts. Stop the video, take a few minutes to digest this overview. The reference listed provides a useful summary of this topic. Let us return to the morphology of woven bone formation in more detail. The stem cells are pericytes, spindled in nature, which accompany the vessels. With the signal to make bone, they move to the bone edge and achieve the status of mature osteoblasts. And they line up on this pink osteoid seam. The bone, partially mineralized, housing many cells, is seen on the left. The osteoblast is a protein-producing cell whose cytoplasm has filled with rough endoplasmic reticulum, the site for making and chemically cross-linking the collagen in a vitamin C-dependent step. The manufactured pro-collagen subunits are then excreted from the cell, where they aggregate to form the fibrosal collagen one. The collagen is laid down in a haphazard manner and one in 10 cells becomes encased in the osteoid to become a resident osteocyte that subserves the bone around it. The rest undergo apoptosis. Slide B shows the final product, woven bone, and this is the prototypical image to lock in your memory forever. The marrow space is filled with small vessels. You see them here, 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 here. And there are adjacent pericytic stem cells, uh, which you can see here, 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 anywhere that there are vessels. And these are the source cells for the process of making bone. This marrow appearance is termed a fibrovascular stroma. The bone, initially unmineralized osteoid, is laid down in a random pattern with many cells per unit area. It is, in essence, an open mesh of structurally weak bone, mineralizing at two to three weeks after a complex biochemical preparation of the osteoid. It is easily swept away with a curette at three weeks post-fracture. The rest of the skeleton forms on cartilage models, as you see on slide A. Cartilage in each of these bone models goes through a, a maturation process to be described in the section on the growth plate. The cell biology of cartilage maturation is complex and will not be discussed here. Ultimately, cartilage cells die an apoptotic death. Initially, in the primary center of ossification and usually in the middle of each cartilage model bone. As they die, the cells leave behind a network of calcified cartilage, the blue staining material you see in the photomicrograph on the right. You can see it here, 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 here. This calcified cartilage is the template on which is deposed pink staining globular bone which is another type of woven bone, which arises from the surrounding fibrovascular stroma. So these cells form this globular bone, which is deposed on the uh, calcified cartilage core. This combined structure of calcified cartilage core with globular bone around it is termed a primary trabeculum. This is the prototypical picture of enchondral bone and again should be locked into your visual 
memory bank forever. Finally, lamellar bone is bone deposed in layers on a pre-existing bone framework, like the individual sheets of plywood. The adult skeleton is a mix of cortical and trabecular bone that is primarily lamellar. The skeleton starts out in the embryo as a mix of enchondral and woven bone, as you will see in subsequent videos. Through the processes of modeling, which involves reshaping, and remodeling, which involves internal repair through removal and replacement, these elemental bone types in the baby are modeled and remodeled, ending up as an adult skeleton of entirely lamellar bone, as shown on slide A. Slide B is an example of cortical lamellar bone that is underg undergoing rapid remodeling in a clinical situation of stress reaction. In this patient, a biopsy has been taken adjacent to a region that showed a periosteal laminated reaction. The doctor mistakenly thought this was a tumor. A proper history would provide the data that would explain this stress reaction. The section on mechanical disorders of the skeleton will outline this in detail. But in this case, the cortical bone appears as a solid pink. Normally 2% of the cortex appears as these tiny holes, and you see them all over the place here, which are the spaces housing the vessels. In this case, however, about 50% of the bone is space. The large holes have been created through combined and massive osteoclast action turned on by the acute overuse. Clasts are seen throughout the slide. You can see them here, 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 and so on. A pathologist will tell you that if you see one osteoclast, this means that bone takeaway is active. Here we see many. Bone formation and deletion are coupled. Deletion occurs first and in an overuse reaction is aggressive, leading to permeation of the cortices of the entire region within a week. This is an example of that process. Bone formation is equally turned on, but the osteoblasts are far less efficient than the clasts. Clasts permeate the cortex within days and it takes many months to fill in the holes created. On the margins of the bone, osteoblasts are lined up actively making lamellar bone to fill the holes. And so here you see the clasts, and here are the blasts lined up, making layer upon layer upon layer of bone to try and solve the problem. This is an example then of lamellar bone formation in which layer upon layer of bone is deposed. The marrow space is filled with vessels and lots and lots of cells. The term for this again is a fibrovascular marrow. This is the engine that creates bone. Parasitic cells turned on by cytokines becoming committed osteoblasts, and the bone-making sequence then follows. You should now review the key points from this discussion. You should review the video images so that you will remember the appearance of the earliest stages of woven and chondral and lamellar bone formation. The next videos will review the osteoblast, the osteoclast, the role of the osteoclast in remodeling and Wolf's Law. This background information will underlie the mechanisms operant as we discuss the growth and development of the skeleton.